And finally, new rule, blind hatred of America is just as blinkered as blind love. And we, and we Americans should really get some perspective about where we live. Watching the shit go down in Afghanistan, I was reminded lately of every conversation I've ever had with an immigrant, almost all of which, if we got to really talking, included the notion, oh, you people have no idea. All you do is bitch about and badmouth your own country, but if you knew about the country I came from, you'd stop shitting on your own. All right, so I wanted to get into this segment that, uh, of course, Bill Maher recently did, where he essentially criticizes the wokesters, or i.e. the modern left, in terms of the modern left not having a necessary level of of appreciation, respect, and admiration for the United States of America. Now, there's no doubt having a certain level of gratitude for the United States of America in terms of specific rights and opportunities that are afforded to citizens is definitely admirable, especially in contrast to some of the places that he lists off that of course don't even have those specific rights, especially as it pertains to women's rights, let alone any chances at sort of upward social mobility. But we have to put things into context and perspective. The only thing that the left, i.e. the modern left, is arguing and are advocating for is providing a critique, critique of the United States of America. All we're saying is that we can do better than merely just wasting our resources, soldiers, and our boots on the ground, let alone funding towards regime change wars, and instead we can take that funding and reallocate it within the context of domestic policy, such as investing more within the realm of the public sector as opposed to investing more within the military-industrial complex and the military-industrial complex tied to regime change wars. We can invest more in education. We can invest more in health care. We can invest more in jobs. That's the only argument that the left is making. We're merely providing a critique, a critique such as America can do better within the context of healthcare and can do better to such an extent by, of course, lowering the eligibility of age of Medicare from 65, 55, 45, all the way until it covers all and therefore rectify the issue as it pertains to thousands, more than 15,000 Americans dying each year due to lack of basic health care we can remedy that issue by investing within domestic policy as opposed to regime change wars. Millions of Americans go bankrupt due to health care related costs. We can invest more within the context of the domestic policy and not invest more so within the context of regime change wars such as within the context of what we've engaged in post, of course, 9-11. We can invest more within the context of education, such as community colleges and or four-year colleges, tuition-free, let alone vocational schools. We already did it within the context of the 1950s or the late 1940s, all the way up until the early to mid-1950s with the GI Bill. Invest in education, such as community colleges and vocational schools, instead of regime change wars. Let's invest more within the economy tied to jobs and even greener jobs. Let's usher in an era of greener jobs that's equivalent to the era of industrialization. Invest in jobs, solid pay, solid unions, solid pension plans, instead of investing in regime change wars. That's what the left is highlighting. We're not arguing that America should be abolished, or is irredeemable in some sort of vague and superficial sense. All we're arguing is that we should expand the public sector and provide more resources and opportunities to citizenry that can correspond in social upward mobility. 
as opposed to investing in some of these regime change wars. That's the distinction that the left is highlighting. And if that corresponds in the left being framed as a bunch of wokesters because they're highlighting that distinction, then so be it. All we're saying is that individuals should raise their level of consciousness and understand that we should be investing more within the realm of domestic policy as opposed to more investments as it pertains to blowing up the budget when it comes to the military industrial complex, let alone engaging in these regime change wars. That's the distinction and or disparity that the left is highlighting. It has nothing to do with being a wokester of any kind. But of course, Bill Maher now, especially recently within the context of about more than about two years or so now, especially within this recent year, has sort of devolved into this analysis where he's sort of scolding the left in the sense of you are just a bunch of wokesters, stop complaining. We're not complaining, we're just critiquing, critiquing America that it could do better as it pertains to allowing for the middle, middle and or lower class and if not the underclass have opportunities rooted in socioeconomic upward mobility, whether that's issues related to dealing with health care, whether that's issues related to dealing with education, whether that's issues related to jobs. Invest more within the context of domestic policies, which will allow for socioeconomic upward mobility, as opposed to investing in the military industrial complex connected to regime change wars. That's the left wing analysis as it pertains to our critique of Afghanistan, let alone other regime change wars that we procure periodically have engaged in post 9-11. But nonetheless, here's some of the analysis that he provides. Have a little perspective about the stuff we howl about here. I'm, so I'm sorry your professor said something you didn't like. That won't be a problem with the Taliban because you're not allowed to go to school. In Saudi Arabia, grown women can be jailed for doing the kind of things we think of as routine without the permission of a male guardian. China rounds you up if you're a, the wrong religion and puts you in camps. More children in Burkina Faso work than are in school. Only 5% of Burundians have electricity. The homicide rate in Honduras is eight times what it is here. Have you ever heard of honor killings? Public beheadings, throwing gay men off of roofs, arranged marriages to minors, state-sanctioned wife-beating, female genital mutilation, marriage by capture, because we have. What's the lesson of Afghanistan? Maybe it's that everyone from the giant dorm room bitch session that is the internet should take a good look at what real oppression looks like. Ask your maid. Ask your Uber driver. Ask the Asian woman giving you a massage. She'll tell you, this place is Shangri-La. And not just because she works in a place called Shangri-La. 